Alexa, turn garage door opener on. Today I'm going to be talking about how I automated my garage door. I'm going to talk about all the routines I have set up and I'm going to give you a look at the hardware that I installed. That's up next here on Bud's Odd Jobs. Garage door automation is possible with two pieces of hardware. This is the Go Control contact sensor that I purchased uh, via Amazon that I use as a momentary switch. It's pretty easy to install. It was kind of difficult to pair. Uh, I found out you have to pair it next to uh, your Amazon hub before uh, you install it up here. So once I figured that out, it was a lot easier to manage. As you can see, this momentary switch is installed right above my garage door opener and it's tied right into the opener. So it acts as, like, a, like I said before, a momentary switch and all that is is like a press button. So when the uh, request to turn it on, it's just like pushing the switch on the wall. This device I see is currently unavailable on Amazon, but there are other momentary switches that I could suggest. Uh, if you just wanna email me, uh, there's an email address on my channel here. Uh, I can send you uh, information about other devices that work with smart things. The other piece of hardware that you need is a tilt sensor. Uh, this tilt sensor is necessary so that you can determine whether the door is open or closed. So this just has a little mechanism inside so when the door goes up it can determine if the door is open or closed. I will leave a link in the description below this video with uh, both the tilt sensor and also uh, with the uh, momentary switch uh, Go Controller. Okay, I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, Go Control Z-Wave Isolated Contact Fixture Module. You see it pictured here. That's the uh, one that I currently have in my garage. There is an Amazon product link here. As I mentioned, it's currently uh, not in stock. I'm not sure if they're going to put it back in stock or not. Uh, but that's the one I have installed and with it uh, I found these install instructions. This is courtesy of Richard Meyer. Uh, this is on the Amazon site. He uh, put in the steps and these are the steps that I basically followed when I did install this contact switch. Uh, the important thing is are these steps here. After you get the device paired what you want to do is log into your SmartThings account. You can get there by following this link, uh, https colon forward slash forward slash account dot smart things dot com. Log in, forward slash login. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go to my devices. Uh, then you want to click edit. And you want to click uh, on the type. And you want to change it to a virtual momentary contact switch. As I mentioned, this creates it as a push button uh, rather than a simple off on toggle switch. Um, so that's necessary to set it up that way. You also need this tilt sensor. Uh, here is the link for that as well. And as I mentioned, uh, if you would like to source these two items, um, I can leave the links in the bottom uh, below the video there too. So you can source them that way as well. Um, I also took the opportunity to look up to see if there were any other smart things compatible alternative Z-Way switches that act as momentary switch. And I found two uh, possible alternative switches. This is also a Go Control switch. You see it pictured here. And then there is a switch called uh, Remotech Z-Wave Dry Contact fi Fixture Module. So either one of these will probably work. If you look at the descriptions, it says that uh, works with smart things and uh, as a garage door opener, that's the remote tech. And uh, this one also, if you look at the description, it says that it also uh, works as a uh, momentary switch. This one, by the way, also includes the tilt sensor. 
So that would be this one here as well. What's nice about this, um, it is available, first of all. And second of all, it's got a product install video that's pretty good. I looked through it. Here's the link for that as well. And I can leave all these links uh, in the description below the video uh, if you would like to uh, source those. So this is the one I do have installed on my garage door. And these two are possible alternatives. According to the descriptions, they work as momentary switches. But again, I have not installed these, uh, so I cannot verify that 100%. I'm just simply going on the descriptions that were provided. I wanted to show you uh, some of the routines that I have for my garage door. I use Stringify to create these routines. I'm going to go into this app here, and I just want to show you. Basically, Stringify is an add-on uh, that works with uh, smart things and you can give Stringify uh, permission to be able to access your SmartThings hub and therefore all your devices. And then when you uh, import those, they show up as things here. And with those things, you can create what is called flows. And I'll show you some of this in a minute. So let's go ahead and look at things. So in the things menu, you can see there are a number of things that come with uh, Stringify, things like a date time, app and also a notification app and that's can be used those things can be used in addition to uh, all of the things that you have connected to your hub things like a rear garage door sensor uh, kitchen door sensor motion sensors things like that you can see here i have my garage door sensor that's the tilt sensor and the garage door opener that's the momentary switch uh, so, going back then to the main menu, using those things, you can create flows. And I have a number of flows that are specific to my garage door. I have this flow that is active right now. And this flow, what it does, it automatically closes the garage door 30 minutes before sunset. Uh, so there's been times when uh, nightfall has come and and I didn't remember whether or not I closed the garage door. Will this do it automatically for me and it'll send me a notice. Some other the routines that I have is um, how many times have you uh, left uh, the home and wondered whether or not you remember to close the garage door. Well this will check the garage door after the last person has left the house and if the garage it finds the garage door open it'll automatically close it and it'll send a text notifying you that it closed the door. This is an automatic open on arrival. I have that currently disabled. Uh, also, I have a uh, routine that if nobody is home and the garage door is breached for any reason, uh, this will activate uh, that tilt sensor and the tilt sensor will not only set off the alarm, but it will also send a text to me that the garage door was breached. Uh, so those are the the flow specific to my garage door. I want to show you this one in particular. I'm going to click on this. And in here you can see uh, the flow. And I'll basically explain what this is doing. Uh, basically think of these columns as steps. So this is step one, this is step two, this will be step three. These are triggers. These triggers cause an action and if this action occurs, then I get a notification. That, so that's basically what's happening. So the tilt sensor, what this routine does, it checks 30 minutes before sunset, and it looks at this sensor, and if this sensor shows that the garage door is open, those two conditions are true. Basically what happens is then it pushes this momentary switch to close the door, and then sends me a notice that the door was closed. I'm going to show you basically how uh, to program uh, this flow. It's fairly straightforward. So let's go ahead and close out of here with this X. Okay, so to add a flow, it's pretty simple. You just hit this plus button up here. Before we do that, I want to show you down at the bottom, you see this starter flows. Uh, that's important because a lot of people have built a lot of flows. And this means you don't have to start from scratch. So if you have an idea with your smart things, chances are somebody else already has created a flow for that idea. 
if it isn't exactly what you want, you can uh, tweak it a little bit by taking maybe certain things out or adding certain things to the flow. Uh, so that's a really nice uh, thing. And there's really good support within the app and also uh, in the Stringify community. You can find videos, uh, various videos uh, on YouTube as well about Stringify. So right now we're gonna add a flow. Okay, so we're ready to start our flow. First thing we need to do is name the flow. I'm gonna call this garage. And once you've named it, uh, then you need to add things. To add things, you simply hit this plus button down here at the bottom. And when you do that, you'll be taken to a screen where you can select things. We need the date and time. We also uh, need to add the notifications. So I'm gonna check that one. We need to add the two sensors. The garage door tilt sensor needs to be added. So let's click on that one as well. And uh, scrolling down, this is the momentary switch that needs to be selected as well. As well. So we need four things uh, for our flow. You simply hit done at the top of the screen and you'll be taken back to the flow screen. I'm gonna pinch this screen to kind of um, make it uh, a little smaller so that I can see all three steps of the flow. And then you simply need to drag each one of these up into the flow. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and touch and drag the time. And right above that, uh, well, actually, I'm going to put the notification up in the third step. In the first step, I'm going to put the tilt sensor. And also in the second step, I'm going to put the garage door opener. So you need to think of these things as steps. Uh, step one are the triggers. Step two is the action. And step three is the notification after the action uh, occurs. So if you think of these as steps, it makes it a lot easier to uh, remember how to lay out these flows. So each of these have uh, settings. I'm going to start with the settings on the garage door sensor. This is the tilt sensor. And I want it to only uh, create an action if the door is open. So if this is true, then I want it to be a trigger to hit the momentary switch. So that one is set. Let's go and do the date time. The date and time, it, we're gonna use the sunset. Um, so I want a trigger on sunset. So you have many options in here. Uh, when does this flow start? Uh, when do you want, uh, do you want a sunset offset or do you want it to happen right at sunset? We're gonna do an offset. So I'm gonna make this 30 minutes before. Do you want it to repeat every day? I do. And do you ever want to end it? And I don't. So we're going to leave this as never. So the only one we're going to change is at the sunset offset. And I'm going to make it 30 minutes before sunset. Select that, hit done, and then hit save. And that one will be ready and complete. Now let's look at the garage door opener. This is the momentary switch. It's currently set as a trigger I don't want it to be as a trigger. I don't want it to cause something. I want it to be an action. So I want to change this uh, to action. So we're going to activate this relay switch and hit save to uh, save that setting. That one's done. And then the last one, basically we want to receive a notification if the garage door is closed. So I want to select send me a push notification. And in the push notification, I'm simply going to put a message in here. And the message is basically going to say the garage door was found open and I closed it for you. So whenever the garage door is closed by Stringify, I will get this message. You simply hit save to save this change. And all it's left to do now is to connect these flows. And to connect these flows, you basically touch and drag your finger up to the action. So from the trigger to the actions. So the yellow dot shows that we are successful in connecting this flow. And this is really important. Whenever you have two flows stacked or two things stacked on top of each other as triggers, you need to connect them at this middle yellow dot here. So I'm going to select the garage door tilt sensor, 
and I'm going to drag the yellow circle down over the yellow dot and now that's connected so these two triggers will work together and if they're both true then the garage door button will be pushed and the garage door will close now all we need to do is connect the notification and where our flow is complete once your flow is complete uh, then it'll work fine these two triggers on the right side excuse me on the left side column in step one will create an action which is basically push the button if they're both true and then a notification will be sent if the garage door is closed if an action occurs now we just enable the flow you'll get a message that says you've successfully enabled the flow if there's an issue it'll let you know and then it's just a matter of closing this out and you'll see here that the flow is now active and running now I'm going to go ahead and delete this flow uh, simply because uh, I already have this flow enabled so this would be a duplicate asking me to confirm that I want to delete it and I do so I'm going to hit yes and that's gone okay so just go back to the main menu here and, and wrap it up I uh, just want to take the opportunity to let you know that I'll be doing additional flows in Stringify I'll also be featuring additional smart devices so if you want to be sure to uh, that you get notified of, of these upcoming videos you'll want to subscribe and in addition to subscribing you want to make sure you hit that notification bell that'll help you get notices anytime I post new content uh, if you find this information helpful uh, please let me know in the comments below let me know uh, additional questions you may have about Stringify or about these uh, contact sensors I'd be glad to uh, answer those questions for you the best I can. And uh, if you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up. Appreciate you watching today, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.